Hello, viewers. Na 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 na, it's the one and only RJK World Tour Podcast. What's up everybody, I am back. This is episode 7 and thanks for tuning in to this podcast. It has been quite a long time since I've released a podcast, a couple of weeks. Apologies for that. RJK World Tour HQ has been uprooted for now to Sydney and hence a lack of episodes due to settling down and stuff but be assured that I am back and I've got a lot of episodes in the pipeline. Despite the lack of recent content the downloads have kept coming and I'm delighted with that and we have now reached 10 countries. So we are in the UK We are in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the good old United States of America. We're also in Italy, Croatia, Switzerland, and now it gets even more crazier, Albania, and we are even in Nigeria. Absolutely love that. Thanks for the continued support, guys. Okay, so, Facebook page, if you've not already, please like that, it's just RJK World Tour, and if you want to communicate, if you've got any feedback you want to give me, you can do it to me on there, or personally, I don't mind, and if you've got the time, an iTunes review would be great, and I've noticed that quite a few people have not checked out episode 5 just yet, and it's a good one, it's only about 30 minutes long, So check that out as well if you've got the time. This week, I'm speaking to my good friend Sam, who did a trip a few years back. Sam says that his trip was a bit limited, but I disagree. I think it's a great example how you don't have to go for a few years or a massive amount of time. You can go for as short or as long as you like and get a lot out of it. So I hope you enjoy the conversation that me and Sam have. Hi, Sam Williams. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm alright, thanks. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, mate. Thanks for joining me. No worries. The RJK World Tour podcast. You've done a bit of travelling. Whereabouts was it you travelled to? Probably one of the more limited travellers that you've spoken to, but... It's all um, about quality, not quantity, mate. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> January 2011 was my big experience of travelling. Went off to Southeast Asia. I went with a mutual friend of ours, Gareth Davies. We went to Thailand and uh, we were there for five weeks in and out, but we went also to Laos and a couple of days in Singapore, but I always mention that when I say where have you been travelling. That's all you need though, really, (laughs) unless you're going to live there. Well, yeah, that is an experience in itself. The rest of my time was in Australia, which I had about three months, just short of three months, travelling up the East Coast, literally doing the most touristy things you could possibly imagine. (laughs) I, I went out with a work visa to hopefully stay out there longer, but the round trip was, yeah, four months in total, because... What I found is, when having this much fun, even though we were looking for jobs in a sort of nonchalant way, is that the right word? I think so. Like <laughs> you're sort of kind of looking for a job, but not really. Boring. Yeah. Boring. It wasn't typing the CV out to its best and you know, sending it to everyone I could possibly, or even just getting the shittest jobs possible. Can we swear on this? <laughs> Family show! <laughs> Sorry. No, it's alright, mate. <laughs> not the first, you won't be the last. Okay. Crappiest job. I gave up after a couple of weeks, probably, and I thought, right, I'm just going to have as much fun as possible, spend all my money, and uh, come home, just do as much travelling, yeah. really. And uh, the guy I was with, Gaz, he, about a week short of me coming home, he uh, he left me, and uh, he went on to, for another two years, over two years, 
when I'm coming back. Yeah, it's good though. It was, it was, uh, I've often said it's the best thing I've ever done. I remember seeing you just after you come back and you were sort of definitely full of enthusiasm about <laughs> what you'd done and you seemed to have had an amaz- amazing time. You seemed to have grown in confidence because of it. 100%, yeah, yeah. I changed as a person. You live, you know, you're born in, well, wherever you're born, but for me it's crew. You live in this world and you think this matters, what my friends think matter, which to an extent it does, but what other people think. You now, where I've been travelling, experienced other things, met a lot of people, and just knowing that there's a lot more out there in the world, you kind of don't care really so much. And it, yeah, it definitely 100% improves as a person. Before I went travelling, you often heard the expression travel broadens the mind. I'd never even understood the phrase. <laughs> I was like, what's that mean? That might have just been me being stupid, but. No, it's a fair comment. Understood it after after coming back actually in a bit of hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. Come back and you hear that phrase again. You go, yeah, that's true. Just brings you out of your shell a bit. Like I wasn't particularly shy or anything before going, but definitely more outgoing since coming back. I sort of noticed it in yourself, and the same happened with me as well. I've experienced what you said basically. Yeah. So you started off in Thailand. (laughs) Yeah. I'm guessing. Let's go back to that. Yeah, landed in. Bangkok. So I was 22 at the time, and me and Gaz, I think Gaz was more of a travelling thing, I was just like, this sounds like an adventure, let's go do something, this will be fun, not got any reason not to go. But we were naive, so Koh Sam Road, everyone's heard of that, well, yeah. a lot of people heard of that, if it's you go to beach. Bangkok. Isn't it on the beach? Is it on, on the, the beach? Book? Oh, right, in the beach, right. If I mean, it's on the actual beach. No, like, the, you know the film with DiCaprio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Because he meets the guy with the map or whatever. We spent two nights thinking we were on Coast Sound Road, yeah. partying. <laughs> and then we just I'm met some people. I'm in yes, it's changed my life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we weren't even on the road. <laughs> so we, because um, we, we met these, I don't know, I think they were American guys. And they go... No, you're not even on the right road. <laughs> we're like, we were still having a great time anyway because there was buckets everywhere and I don't know what they put in them buckets, but yeah, you're just partying on the streets and you think, what the hell is this city? Two blocks down, we're actually on the proper road. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they basically got these two... We both decided to shave our heads before we went as well. Not sh- not fully, but you know, like number two on top. Yeah. It's got these white sort of pasty guys with really rubbish haircuts. <laughs> Um, <laughs> not knowing what they're doing um, getting sloshed and probably becoming idiots like we found you know like people sell hats yeah thought that was a great idea bought one of these Orson hats I called it with the band Orson and uh, yeah there's lots of photos of that um, so yeah I'll, I'll move on from Coastal Road we didn't have any trips planned or anything really but the hotel we were staying in there was a little travel agent we sort of wanted some advice where to go and, and she really friendly lady I recommend her if I could tell you what hotel <laughs> I was staying in or her name she basically outlined this whole trip and it was it was kind of good in a way because it got us doing stuff rather than just getting pissed on a on a street which we didn't know the name of and also give us a plan for when we were going to leave yeah we had a flight booked from Australia, uh, from Thailand to Australia and then nothing else so we needed something to fill that gap. On one hand, that was really good. On the other hand, looking back at it, it would be nice if we just did it all on our own. If she just gave us some guidance and then did it all. But we had, like, s- specifically, but three nights in Go PP, Fifi, whatever it is. Yeah. Go Ta. No, not Ta. Panyan, Samui. And because of the visa issues, you've got to leave and come back. So we went. Did you go around there? Yeah. Is it three weeks you can do and come back? If you come by air, it's 30 days. If you come in by land, it's 15 days. Uh, and you can get some 60-day visa, but you have to... I don't know exactly how you go about it. Standard flying in was 30 days, yeah. yeah. So what she did... Because you can literally leave and come back and you get another 30 days. So is that when you went to Singapore, was it? No, no, that's when we went to Laos. Ah, okay. So... Well, the first little trip we did was hill trekking, which was really good, like really scenic, not seen anything before. We'd thrown in a group of people, which at the start of your trip, you might not be expecting that straight away. 
barely sleeping because you're in in the hills, just on these like rugs, basically. But it's really fun because you, you say if you, if you enjoy socialising and meeting new people, but all you've got you've got no signal, you've got no electricity, all you've got is drinking games, and you also like there's the language barrier. So this was all new to us, and it was amazing. It was eye opening because you don't know who these people are, and yet you're getting on because you've got this travelling thing in common, even though we were right at the start of ours. I really recommend hill trekking to anyone who wants to go to Thailand, cause, just because of the scenery as well. So it was that. Where was it? Chiang Mai. Yeah. It's north, very north Thailand. It's about an eight, eight or nine hour bus journey from, Co- uh, from Bangkok, I think, is that right? We got the train... Which, oh, well, that was horrendous. <laughs> Come on, tell me about that. I never got a train in Thailand. No. Buses were bad enough. Yeah, well, I think compared to buses, trains are a bit of a luxury. Uh, even the VIP buses. <laughs> in, in the quote marks there, yeah, the VIP bus. I'd like to see a non-VIP bus <laughs> if that was a VIP bus, because fear for your life. Uh, but the train, you kind of think, this is, this is good, because I've been up all night. Um getting an early train it's seven six maybe hours I can't remember I was going to fall asleep we've got a bed which is good so we got in there we're like yeah set up right you got a little curtain and and you sorted and um, you feel every bump every stop uh, everything I didn't sleep the whole time <laughs> and it just stressed you the fuck out and it's like when does this when is this going to end but it was it was alright I was with someone I wouldn't like to go on my own and I wouldn't like to go just sitting down because there was you could buy a ticket where you just sat I don't know if anyone sleeps on that I had a few tales on the trains one of them was a guy who was asleep and he woke up how did he get asleep? he was yeah, on a chair as well <laughs> was it? yeah must and have been that and he woke up and there's some old Thai lady with a hook trying to like get his bag from underneath his legs or something like that oh trying to steal it yeah oh, right. and then I heard another tale on the trains where someone had woken up and then they'd realised the person behind had gone through their bag and sort of taken valuables out because oh, yeah. on the train you've obviously got places to go you can go to another carriage and yeah. you can get away with it yeah bus you kind of yeah, so rude. Um, all the, negative about trains then so far. Yeah, we, we were alright, so we just, I think maybe we were in a bit of more of a luxury place, you know, for 20p more, which is decent. The funniest thing that happened on that train actually was this uh, this woman coming around with fresh orange juice, and she's like, free orange juice, free orange juice. <laughs> and we're like, oh, so yeah, sweet, I'm not, I'm not getting any sleep, so I'll have some, that's a perk. Thanks, cheers. And she's like, 20 baht. <laughs> so he drank it. <laughs> oh, right, he said free. Yeah, it's free, and then 20 baht. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> like, it's just good business, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, it's like. great selling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about 20 baht, but... Um, uh, so, yeah, after hill checking from the train, we... And my, my, my timelines, you might have to confer this with Gaz, confirm, because... Uh, I don't remember everything exactly how it went. It was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, just a few experiences is fine. So our our trip out of Thailand in order to get back in to get the extended you know, visa thing was to Laos. That was a... Oh, I don't remember, actually. A few people... It was a bit of a boat journey. And then it was just but like a, but like a mini bus. It wasn't a crab, crab bus. But it was long. The NTN, I think we went into. Spent a couple of nights there. Really kind of, I wouldn't say poor, but not very developed. Like, you walk around and it's very simple, simple life. Um, the most That's the most simple life I've sort of been around. Like, in VNTN? Yeah, I think it was VNTN or. It's the capital of Lao, that is. Oh, is it? It's probably a different place then. The first place we got into anyway. And you Van, came... Van, no, Van Vien's Tune, isn't it? So you came in by a boat and a bus? Not sure. <laughs> you might oh, want to edit this bit out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. This is entertaining stuff. Right, there's three places I went to. There's yeah. Vien Tien, yeah. Van Vien, and the place a bit north of that, which I've forgotten the name, where there's Night Bowl in there. Did you do that? No. There's Udon, which we came back into Thailand via 
but the place we got into Luang Prabang yeah that's it yeah is that, the, is that yeah. what you're thinking of yeah, yeah. so that's that is run it's not run down but you know what I mean it's like dirt tracks and yeah there's no not like, much no on. chains or anything no. like that it's, yeah, there's it's no all local businesses multi story yeah businesses got a bit of money out there became a millionaire for the first time <laughs> in my life hopefully not the last <laughs> Um, fell like a million kip. <laughs> yeah, it's class when you can do that, isn't it? I did that in Vietnam as well. Yeah, but I think it was eight thousand kip is is a dollar. Yeah, I think a US dollar. Right, which so, makes it very difficult when you get used to it within a couple of days. Actually, the currency, as like once you bought a couple of things, but. Uh, you have to work it out to begin with when you've got a million. Why do they have a million? Like, I know. What are you can buy think something for one kip. You could take off at least a few zeros, at least <laughs> three zeros, I yeah. reckon. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, we stayed there, I think, one night. Just found it interesting, really, with little markets going on. Then we went into the NTM, definitely, because that was a bit more, that was a lot busier. But again, just looking at markets and things, quite peaceful time there. But then, the main reason we went was for tubing. I don't think you got to do tubing, did you? Because I you did, sh- but did. I, my experience was different than yours. So you talk about yours, and then I'll right. say how mine Let's was different to compare. that. Compare. We got into Vang Vieng. We'd met a couple of lads on the coach a couple of days before, but went our separate ways. But we said we'd meet up for, for the tubing. I literally, just go into a hotel and with a you could barter. I think it was two hundred fifty thousand kip per night. And we we got we did that. He was reserving it for someone else, and we still got the room somehow because we were paying for it. it was one hundred fifty thousand, maybe expensive. That is it. One hundred fifty thousand. Because I was paying about forty thousand. Yeah, I might have got that wrong either. Dorms and like five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but saying that, because our experiences were different when you were there, chewing was booming. Yeah. But because of the because it was a different experience. Seem to think it was like around one hundred fifty thousand. That yeah. But oh. yours have been more busy, so they would have been able to sort of charge more yeah. money. Yeah, it was. People, there's a lot of people looking for rooms. Yeah. Um, but okay. I say this guy had the one reserve for someone else. Yeah, he gave it to us. <laughs> it's one of the nicest rooms I stayed in, actually. Overlooking like this beautiful scenery. It looks like there's hills in the clouds and um, and all that business. Um, nice food, loads of shops, and it's all all the business is based on this this tubing experience. We, so we met up this these two lads who we kind of befriended for, for this for this trip and we'd go in to uh, for tubing didn't actually technically tube because didn't get a tube we just went to the first bar walked to the next bar walked to, by yeah. the time we got to the third bar there's about I don't know how many but there's 12 I think there was there's initially. a lot more than, than what we went to um, it's, it's silly you just get even a day you get a free shot of brandy as soon as you're there beer pong going on all over the place music playing people are diving into rivers I did it once because I was a bit aware of all the news stories of people dying and stuff which is a little bit off-putting but once you've watched about three or four people jump into the same spot you go right trust this one <laughs> hopefully don't die did it it was fun but the most enjoyable bit was just again meeting people and drinking with them having a good time really and it went on for about six hours when the sun started going down. I think the main thing I remember about it is just the floors bouncing, people drawing on each other, a lot of people on drugs, but generally having a good time. There's like no no knobheads really. Yeah, we did three nights on the trot. Yeah, that's literally enough because you didn't stop. You you did go into town afterwards, and there was a couple of clubs. I remember walking into. You have to go across a runway to get to one of them, don't you? Uh, what, in the, the clubs? Yeah. What do you mean a runway? <laughs> what I say? Oh, like, what a plane? <laughs> that would have been very good. <laughs> runway, like. Yeah, actually, yeah, I seem to remember something like that, yeah. I remember, like, having pen, pen all over my face, like a penis drawn on it and stuff, and a bandana on it, just thinking I was ace, um, with this tube and like, Van Vien top on. And drunk as you like walking into a restaurant people enjoying their meals and just shouting just like we need a table (laughs) like just being a dick (laughs) like really embarrassed the next day because I remembered what I was doing (laughs) 
and it wasn't fun really I mean sorry it was fun but it wasn't nice for me to do this oh, another thing about um, Bambian which is quite funny is they had a load of restaurants facing TVs so all the tables sorry all the chairs friends, was it? facing friends or family guy yeah because so. you're all just monged out on the next day and you're just watching family, like, hours of family guy it's like brilliant with some tinned spaghetti hoops on a baked potato yeah I was quite <laughs> surprised about that so I remember thinking if if I owned a bar there, I reckon I could dominate the market by showing episodes of The Fresh Prince. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Great <laughs> idea. Would just flock to this bar? Yeah. And I'd be, well, a gazillionaire over there. Yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the kit. <laughs> with at least 100 quid. <laughs> no, mine was a lot different because, so basically, just touching on what you said, yeah, a lot of people died <coughs> to the Excuse point me. where I'll butcher this number, but I think 20 people died in a year. A lot of Australians and Canadians could have been just, yeah. just say jumping into the river head first and landing on a rock, and you just you put that many people in that intoxicated next to a river, which is not which has got a strong current and a lot of rocks in it. It's just gonna think be, about it; like, it doesn't make sense. It's just it's it's surprising that it's shut down. And apparently, I think there was a I'm going to say somewhere between twelve and fifteen bars. I forget the number. Yeah. And it was just before I went within a few months, and they just sent. Like, it was like a witch hunt and just pulled these because they're like wooden shack bars right yeah yeah so they just pulled them down yeah. one by one and just took them to pieces because it yeah. was that many people dying but when I went there there was there was just loads of rooms going you get in anywhere yeah. and it was it was 40,000 a night yeah. and all the hotels were empty and was it busy it was quite busy I, I still really liked the place like I had a good time and I still thought it was a good atmosphere yeah. and in many ways it might have even been worked out better because it was a bit more chilled right, yeah. I did it twice the tubing and used an actual tube as well oh, right. and I think the general thing is that what used to happen is people would start off and do the first day on a tube and then realise the novelty factor is gone and you yeah. just do it yourself but because there was no bars what yeah, what's the idea if you'd, you'd so what we did going down the river on a tube well what we did is we got like a waterproof bag Right. And rubber ones that you can roll the top up and put stuff in. Yeah. So you just buy one of those and then buy a load of beers. Okay. So you can put like Keep five or six beers, oh, yeah. tie it, just attach it to that. Sound, and because yeah. it's a river, it's like a fridge pretty much. Yeah. Because they're all really cold. <laughs> so. Yeah, got that. <laughs> and then you can and then you can attach your flip flops through the strap. It's just a nice sort of chilled afternoon just floating down the river and it's a nice river isn't it and you've got the mountains to one side yeah the, yeah, the main the mountains are yeah. really like, spectacular to look at yeah so it's just a nice way to spend an afternoon just floating that sounds a lot more chilled than uh, what we were doing it was good like, I, I had a, a good time doing it at night you can just like you say there's bars and stuff you can go into how long did you go for? four days yeah four. you don't need more well we have different experiences but yeah, we didn't. We didn't need more than doing it three nights on the trot. People do it all year round. I know. Yeah. Or I did it? Did do it all year round. I know a few guys who did that. Yeah. I know a guy did it for. I think he said it was eighty days in a row. He did it for. Yeah. Then just had a really bad night and just booked a flight to Australia. <laughs> just couldn't deal. It's with kind it. of yeah. I wouldn't advise anything like that where it's one place. There's a guy who's there for six years. Yeah. When I was there. That's just daft. What? Trying to do a world record. I don't know. He was a bit of an odd character. I knew him from when I worked in this bar in Cambodia, but for three weeks I did it. Mm. And he was working at a rival bar, and he'd done six years in Van Vieng or something like that, four or five years. <laughs> Gone down to Cambodia, done that, and then they all went back up to Laos. Mm. Oh, this is crazy, right? Mm. There's a few of them who were from that bar that was next to mine, went back to Laos, opened up a bar again. They didn't have permission and they didn't have a permit and it was illegal. It's a bit dodgy, and usually you get away with things like that in those countries. But yeah, yeah. They basically got arrested by the police, mm -hmm. locked in a cell. Then they got deported to Bangkok. They could just pay a certain amount of money to get out of prison, so they got out of prison. Scary. They had to use all their money. So. No, don't do it, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words from the cell who's there. <laughs> so yeah, I liked it. It was actually in my top five places when I did Southeast Asia. All the times I had. But yeah, I put that in my top five. Yeah, I think I would, of my my short time travelling. It's definitely something that sticks in my mind. Yeah, it's or, so unique, isn't it? Really? Not so much. <laughs> but 
it's kind of one of the things to say oh I've been tubing now, especially now it's been shut down it's like yeah, I was kind of gutted because I'd heard you talk about it and a couple of other mates and how yeah. awesome it was and crazy. It's just mad, this is mayhem, really. Can't wait, and then landing in. A lot of people go to this really small town to uh, get smashed, really. It's just like such a random place. Yeah, we're just because it's on a river, river and mountains. And yeah, it's, it's odd. But... but you know how you sort of meet people as you go around? Yeah, yeah. I landed in Singapore, came up through Malaysia, and then into Thailand, and then. You meet people who've come from places you're going to. Yeah. Some are going the same way, so you bump into them every place. Yeah, yeah. And some are going a different way. And we bumped into people who were coming the opposite way. And they were kept on telling us, yeah, tube and shut now, we went and it was uh, rubbish. And I thought, oh no, like, I really wanted to do that. But turn up anyway, like I said, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, I actually got to appreciate the place when there wasn't so much carnage going on. So, yeah. Yeah, so after tubing what do you do then right so then coming back into Thailand by the way the, the woman who set all this plan up got it wrong we were actually stayed a day over when we were trying to leave Thailand because oh, we no. come back here and we had 31 days left in Thailand so there was <sighs> before Australia <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I'll jump back to the, what we were doing before but no, let's go to Singapore to go to Australia uh, one way out of Thailand like the police come to us after we scanned our passports and we're absolutely broken it <laughs> and think oh god foreign police and all this it was a pain like, like the in between is when you're looking <laughs> down on the floor <laughs> yeah it's terrible it's frightening we had to sit in a room with, with police and we were like oh god what's going to happen um, we had to pay like a ten pound fine yeah no I had the same I had the same I specifically bought right in their pocket I think yeah definitely <laughs> I specifically bought a flight from Laos to Thailand because yeah. I, I wanted to spend a month there for my second time around I didn't want to have to do a visa run because I'd done them before and it's just a waste of time and yeah. for the sake of just buying a flight you know you're saving not much money by doing a visa run but yeah I completely miscalculated it and had two days <laughs> and then you did the same thing this guy who teaches maths I know <laughs> obviously not very well I had an excuse <laughs> someone else did it <laughs> I think it was just down to this lazy I just had enough of the and thought I'll go now and, uh, yeah. and other people going and they looked at dates and thought yeah it's probably about right didn't check it properly but yeah, I had the same thing where they pulled me into this room. It's a tenner a day. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Five hundred baht a day. But I'd met people. Who, was that tenner? Five hundred baht. I think it was something like that. Don't I think. I think we spent. I think we gave them two fifty. Something like that. It wasn't even a tenner. Oh really? Yeah. It's something like that. Something where you, you don't really want to give that money away, but it's not going to. Well, you only think back and you're like, yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Well, could you drop that somewhere? Yeah, yeah. But then I, I had that. What I'd done is I'd realised it halfway. Well, as soon as I got my passport stamped for, no, yeah, yeah, we, we realised. What a clown! Yeah. yeah. And then I just asked people who I'd met along the way, and people had done the same thing, and they told me what would happen. And sure enough, mm. I was sort of well prepared for it because I knew I was going to get pulled over and got this real bit of writing in Thai in my passport. Yeah. And then number two in it for the number of days of oh. overdue. <laughs> so. um if you are going to go travelling, realise what the visa allows you to do and don't mess it up. Or mess it up and pay £10 is the advice. Um, so then I we come back down to Udon. Now, I don't know how we got from there down to the islands. To be honest, that could have been a, that could have been a bus. Which is the one with the, the really long bus journey from hell. <laughs> that one. That, uh, well, there was a couple, really. I just I don't know when they were right, but I was tell you a couple of bus journeys in Thailand. First one, we'd got this this VIP bus, but right, and we turned up and we'd been in VIP buses before, and we're like, oh, this is actually quite a good one. It's not bad, you know. You've got like at least three inches in front of you before another <laughs> seat. This is all right. We got 100 meters down the road, and it, and it just put out. And then so everyone's off the bus, and we're, we're like, what's what's happening next? And like, there's another VIP bus on the way. And it was maybe 40, 45 minutes. Everyone sat outside just on their bags and chatting and whatever. And then I think this actually was coming back from Udon down down to the island. Anyway, this this other VIP <laughs> rickety thing starts coming along. It's like a thousand years old. And we got on. <laughs> and uh, those three inches really were luxury because my knees were touching the... I'm not, I'm not a tall guy. Knees were touching the, the seat in front of me. 
<laughs> I, had, I attempted to adjust my seat so I could maybe lean back slightly because I was direct upright. Yeah. Guy by Amy's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fine, sorry. We were on this for eight hours. Yeah, just the roads are mad. You're like, something out of Top Gear. You don't know how it's not falling off the cliff. But he's, it's, you kind of feel safe, though. I'm kind of like going, this must happen all the time. It might break down, but I can't see it crashing or anything like this. They must do this route all the time. The one thing I was worried about was my luggage because they all these rumours about, you know, you leave your luggage downstairs, people... And they send a little kid in there. They send a kid or something and they at a stop and they take all your stuff. But, again, nothing happened, nothing was wrong. The only bad thing was, like, literally the amount of space you had. At one point I managed to get to sleep by putting my head on the seat in front of me with a blanket in between it. So I'm, like, leaning like that. But then, obviously, it's such a jittery bus and Gaz was awake at the time. This Gaz, the guy I went with... Such a jittery bus that you, your head moves away, the blanket drops, and you smash your head on the front <laughs> seat. <laughs> and Gaz is like, he said it took me a couple of seconds to realise. I looked, looked at him, sort of waking up. And I was like, ow. <laughs> this thing just smashed my head. But it's interesting. Oh, and then um, that was the bus where they put chickens on. <laughs> just as a small note. And um, what? <laughs> The funniest part about that was the, the reaction of someone. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, we were all sort of kind of sleeping, woke up to... Because the sun was coming up. I'm like, what's going on? And I could see, oh, right, there's a cage of chickens, obviously. Because <laughs> yeah. we're on a bus where you put chickens on. They get VIP treatment, <laughs> same as everyone else. <laughs> it kept going, because it was dawn. <laughs> the guy at the front shouts back, Can someone turn your alarm off! Thought <laughs> it was a wake up call. <laughs> and we just started pissing ourselves. Because <laughs> it was a cockerel. <laughs> you can't make that up. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. You went to the islands on, yeah, on that bus. Yeah, speed us up a bit. Got there, so yeah, we get there eventually. Best island, I'd say, even though there's full moon party at Koh Panyan, the best one, I, in my opinion, was Koh Pipi. Have you been? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, has this been talked about on these? Podcast. Uh, only loosely, so. Um, I just found it, it mad that there's this like tiny little. It was like a built-up town. It was like Legoland, in my opinion. It was like these roads which weren't big enough for a car, so you'd see a lot of bikes going past. But it's all all walked. Hotel on the left, hotel on the right, laundry shop, just everything everyone needs, frankly, for that place. And then there's the beach. We were in a well, nice little little hotel as well, and the beach. It had parties every single night, like people with firework, well not fireworks, but you know, light shows. Um, fire shows? Yeah, fire shows, light shows, what's that thing called? We walk into a bar, limbo, music blaring, like buckets all over the place and everyone's just having a really good time. You do the day trips, I went scuba diving, snorkelling, went to a disappointing place called Monkey Island which had no monkeys. <laughs> They're not? No, not when we went. <laughs> well, those when I was they, having yeah. a fight and yeah. they were picking on this one. Nicking your stuff and stuff. Didn't do that. Yeah. Didn't get that close. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any when we went. Not one. There's no monkey there, it's just the most pointless thing. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's just not impressive at all. It's just a crap be- uh, thing. But then there's the beach beach. Most beautiful like sand I've ever felt on my feet. More so than the Whitsundays, Whitehaven beach. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just the just the feel of it, like flower putting your feet in flower. Really hot though it was, so we got to the shelter. Uh, walk around there, and there's all the you could see all the damage done by the tsunami and stuff at the time. Not the at the time of the tsunami, but they, they were still re- rebuilding it. So it was in, had everything really: in, interest, parties, spectacular views, experiences. We had a great time there. <laughs> From. I don't want to talk about it, <laughs> but I got in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Apart from that, and then we moved on, right? <laughs> but that's that like we are in this conversation. Yeah, no, I don't think I t- should talk about it. So then there was Koh Panyan, which has the full moon party, which I think is great, but I think it's a bit hyped up. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, it's because everybody says when you go to Thailand, oh, make sure you do a full moon. Yeah, and you almost plan your trip around it I know we did you have yeah, to book yeah. your accommodation a month in advance and yeah, yeah. you've heard how crazy it's going to be so when you've got that level of expectation it's got to be really really good mm-hmm. for you to appreciate it and it is good it is because good. You, 
if the bar is set so high, it's almost inevitably going to fail. Whereas yeah. with PP, you, you don't really know what to expect. No. And so when you turn up, exactly. you have a good time. You're like, oh, cool. I didn't really know what to expect, and I had a great time. So it's exceed the expectations. Well, I was there. They had parties up and every night up until the forming party. Yeah. They I found them. Better than the better, well, yeah, as good as if not better than the actual party itself. Yeah. One reason for that as well is because Gaz was ill, so ill that he, when we got to the full moon party night, he went, but he wasn't drinking. He left early. Yeah. And we had a tuk tuk, but for our next trip, because we were leaving the following morning at seven a.m., which was the, is the second like hell bus journey to be honest. Because yeah, you finished the full moon party, got to get a tuk tuk, find way back to the hotel, drunk as a skunk. And then slowly sober up, slowly getting a hangover, and it's a ten-hour journey by coach, bus, coach, dropping people off miles and miles and miles apart and stuff. And you're there covered in fluorescent paint and a stupid vest, <laughs> yeah. stinking of booze, just wanting to get to the next place. Oh, there was Koh Samui in between those two. Sorry, but I didn't like that. Copanyan, oh, not Copanyan. Is Phuket in Koh Samui? No, Phuket's above PP on the west side of the, the mainland. And what, is it not an island? Oh, is it inland? So, no, Phuket, you can, it's attached to the mainland by a bridge, but it's a big island just off the west, okay. and PP's a small island below that. Right. On the east side, Koh Penang is there, and below it is Koh Samui, right. and above Koh Penang is Koh Tao. Okay, so we went to Koh Phi Phi, Koh Samui, which was a bit boring. Well, I've never been myself, but I've heard it's just a holiday it's destination a for all these. City, yeah. Uh, because there's an air, big, quite a big airport, so you can get some yeah. direct flights from Australia to there. And yeah, bars. Places. The only interesting thing really is, like, experience of food. There's probably more, like, restaurants and stuff, because it's more touristy. And then we went to Phuket. Yeah, that's an eye-opener. You did? I did. I had two different experiences. I went to a place called Caron, which was like a couple's place. Okay. And I went with Phil, oh, yeah, Taffers, yeah. Taffers. There, and it was low season and it was raining, so there was just no point as being there. You couldn't really go to the beach and there was nothing to do. We played crazy golf one day yeah. and then went to watch some football matches in a sports bar in town that no one was at. This is in Caron? Yeah, near right. Caron and Kata. They're the two parts of, of Phuket. And then we got a a bus to Patong. Patong, that's it, yeah. On the other side of Phuket. Yeah. And there's a place called Bangla Road, and it's just the scummiest road. Patong's in Phuket, then? Yeah. Yeah, right, OK, I remember that. And it's just, it's just that, again, it's an, another sort of touristy holiday resort place, really. Full but of it's prostitutes. Just so, oh, it's full of prostitutes. Yeah. There's... To an uncomfortable level, it's like, oh, this is, this is a novel thing. Oh, look, there's another one, Lady... Oh, there's... Oh no, there's more. This this is horrible. It kind of it loses its novelty straight away. I found. Yeah, and then I remember one of them kept on coming up to me. Yeah. And was like saying, "Oh, she's a thousand bar, bar the bar." I'm like, "No, just go away. I'm not yeah. interested." Yeah. And then she just broke down in front of me, started crying. No way. I was like, felt so sorry for her. <laughs> so I took her to Seven <laughs> Eleven and bought her like a bottle of water and a pack of Lay's, some yellow Lay's. She got laid. <laughs> I have to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> band, yeah. Best joke ever. <laughs> I just felt so sorry for it. Just, yeah, no, it was, it was tragic. Really. It's obviously a bad industry. It's just so, so scummy, and you like, you didn't know what to expect. And you go to Thailand to sort of travel and experience different things. There's a McDonald's in every corner, mm. and the subway, and stall that, and it's just a complete dive. Yeah, it wasn't nice. It was um, just the pestering of them all as well, like. You say no to one, as soon as you brush them off your shoulder, you've got another one trying to get. Yeah. And people must just go there, it must work, and it's yeah, it's horrible, though. <laughs> just, get, just came in after the fifth prostitute. Oh, I then. Fine. It's <laughs> 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 <Is> that irresistible. <laughs> so, what is uh, Phuket is good for, though? Rock music. Uh, no? Just a guess, was that? <laughs> yeah, it could be went a rock bar. But yeah, go on. <laughs> um, martial arts gyms. Oh right, okay. There's some American like mixed martial arts gyms, like, yeah. like really famous ones over there that have set up their own gyms in Phuket. Oh, right. 
There's one called Phuket Top Team, which is an affiliate of American Top Team. There's one called... It's called AKA in San Jose in California, and it's called AKA Thailand. Yeah. And there's like a guy who actually fought in the UFC just 24 hours ago who runs that gym. No way. Yeah, like real sort of high level. Yeah. And you can train, like get some high quality training and accommodation for peanuts. Yeah. Like I looked at a three month program to do Jiu Jitsu and it was $900 for three months worth of training and accommodation. $900. And that's... That's well good, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like two training sessions a day, six days a week, $900. Did you do it? No, I only seen it recently. Oh, right. If I had the time and it's bigger over there, isn't it? like kickboxing. Oh, Muay Thai is massive. I went to a yeah. Muay Thai show there. Yeah, we never saw any. You know, no. Quite entertaining. Yeah. I mean, if you, I'm into that. I'm not like usually into like. Yeah. I would have gotten like if it was like. I mean, something Gaz pushed for or something, but. Yeah, I'm into it anyway, so yeah. it's kind of good for me. But because I've got a bit more of an understanding of it now. So I did a bit of training and I've watched a bit more. I'd, I'd like to see it again just to see because I'd understand a lot more of what's going on. The ones we saw were kind yeah. of stalemates, whereas sometimes you go to, they mismatch people so you get loads of knockouts, but these were quite even. So who cares if you are going to go and you're not into prostitutes but you are into <laughs> martial arts? Yeah, it's a good place. Then it's all right. Just, um, <laughs> you have to karate chop the prostitutes. <laughs> get them off you it's class as assault <laughs> yeah no don't do that <laughs> <laughs> right so so yeah, I guess done, that takes you done to done the Singapore, islands really yeah Singapore I think we had two nights there just as a waiting destination before a flight to Australia it's all you need though because it's so expensive and there's nothing yeah, that different you can do there that you've not done elsewhere in Asia because and... we've been in for f- five weeks out of England now when we're in Southeast Asia it's completely eastern Going into to Singapore was like crazy because we had shops, they had malls, they had Starbucks um, and basically yeah. England but in a parallel universe where it's boiling <laughs> and they sold like really similar products but not quite yeah. English. It was like they sold like Willy Wonka sweets and stuff but it was like stuff I've never seen before. It was an odd experience. We land, Also we got there and we hadn't got a hotel. As soon as we stepped off like this air conditioned train, hottest. <laughs> hottest place I've ever been and we had to walk around for like an hour or so trying to find a hotel and this old toothless man was like you need a hotel and uh oh yes and some water <laughs> yeah there's nothing much else to say it's very clean it's nice actually after you've been in Thailand to like get a proper shower and just remember what a cinema looks like and things like that but yeah there's not much else to say about it it was nice yeah it was that first place I went to first place yeah right. but once you you walk around and it's like built up and it looks good and it's amazing it's just like yeah. it's, it's spectacular super clean and efficient and trains are fast and yeah all the people are very polite and, and they all speak English as well okay, it's like a hub for business and stuff yeah, yeah. I think it's a great place to, to go for business but yeah holiday destination maybe no more than two days or whatever if you had a lot of money then it, it could work out quite well for you but yeah, there's probably a lot more to see. I mean, yeah, probably not in t- tip of the iceberg here, but... Yeah, I think that's the same with a lot of people. But I think for me, it was, it was the first place I went to, so... And it's, I didn't have a source of income. So you're kind of wary of that, and you're yeah. walking around, and it's to do such and such activity. Like, you could do night golf there, I think, which sounded really cool. Oh, really? But then it costs quite a bit of money. Yeah. When you've not got money coming in. And you could do elephant treks and that, but... And they, yeah. But you look at the prices, and you know that if you go up to Thailand you're going to get it for a quarter of the price yeah so we just tend to walk around it and have a look at places but then you do that you do it for two days and you, you're done no no yeah. I think you could if you're like a, an older businessman or something you want to experience a different or slightly different culture of business and go there for a week it'd be good but yeah you need a fair bit of money so moving on from Songa Park we then flew into Melbourne in uh, well, our, our town was St Kilda, which is in Melbourne, but it's not like the centre. It's a train ride away. It's just on the beach. Yeah, and it was a bit chilly when we we were there because when did we land, uh, that would have been mid February. In, in summer. <laughs> <laughs> it was chilly, honest. <laughs> we went out in January. Yeah, come back. Yeah, it's, it was either end of February. 
Not much. It was definitely not as hot, hot as Thailand. No, they call Melbourne the city of four seasons, and I experienced it myself. You'd wake up and it'd be a nice day, and then it would rain. Yeah. And then it would be go dark and grim, right. and then be a bit windy, and then it'd be sunny the rest <laughs> yeah. of the day. So even though we were in summer, it was you had to wear trousers and so I put trousers on for five weeks. And it's like I need to buy some jeans. Didn't do a lot there really. We just we were just getting settled as this is Australia. This is a lot busier. A lot more expensive. The hostels are run a lot better. <laughs> but we yeah we had a good time. Um, but we thought after I think we were there for two weeks after not finding a job. This is me um, and guys trying to trying to find jobs and then sort of giving up on the idea. And um, we went right. Let's let's go do some travelling again. I've not really got much to tell about Melbourne to be honest. We then got a night bus to Sydney. Really like Sydney. Obviously, got the the big tourist attractions and stuff, but things like the park around Sydney Opera House. I don't remember the name of that? Botanic Gardens. Yeah, yeah. Or botanic. I don't anyone calls them botanic. botanic. <laughs> <laughs> Proper botanic. <laughs> <laughs> they they're nice. We saw tr- uh, Billy Connolly. Did you? <laughs> yeah, which is guaranteed if you go to Sydney. <laughs> how that happen? Just down walking the down the street, we saw him. Did you say this guy with a purple beard. No, it was kind of too far until I was arguing, no, it wasn't. Gus goes, yes, it definitely was. Um, we went, fine, let's go and chase him and we'll get an autograph. And then he just stepped into this hotel. So. That's random. Yeah, just a yeah, nice city. Again, we didn't do too much there, but we did book our camper van trip, which I would say is the best 10 days of my life, really. Wow. Possibly. I mean, Thailand is like an experience in itself. It's kind of surreal and mad and all happened within a blink of an eye but um, I've got a lot more memories from the camper van trip and I would suggest going travelling either buy or rent a car buy a banger or something or if you can do a camper van trip do it for his, like a month or whatever just plan it beforehand and well, I suppose it t- depends what you like if you like to be independent yeah living off your own back maybe not sure of where you're going to park and stuff but it's it's kind of fun because we got moved on so many times you're not allowed to park here mate and we're like drunk out of faces I'm like the least drunk so I had to move this cop is right there he could have just then pulled me over and, and find me <laughs> things like that just add to the experience I think if, you know, if, as long as you've got your ways about you you, you have a really good time unfortunately ours was only 10 days from Sydney to Brisbane but yeah cooking out of a crappy little pot at the back of a on the stove thing at the back just give it like a sense of freedom do you know what I'm saying all this maybe I'm saying all this because I only had 10 days and that is enough that's just enough yeah. maybe a month is too long or however long people do it for you might like to go back to the luxuries of a hotel so I'd say definitely do it for a while <laughs> yeah I did it for like 3 days that was great yeah. in road yeah which we talked about ourselves like last week yeah I think I would have done it myself had I had the time and that was it really, the time that I only had two weeks to, to say, do the East Coast in yeah. speech marks. So I had to do things quickly and jump on buses and then do whatever and then exactly, yeah. do it again. But if I had more time to do it, I'd be inclined to do that as well. It was really good and there's also other people. Um, we met a couple of girls doing the same trip, exact same trip really. Followed them around like a pair of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good. The first bit between what we found between uh, Sydney and Brisbane is the first almost half I don't know how many miles that is it's a long way we tried to cover that as quickly as possible because there wasn't many places to stop off at we went to uh, what's it called the only place I know between a surface paradise and Byron, Byron Bay Byron Bay so yeah we also did Nimbin which is a bit inland of the coast and that's a tiny little town where there's a load of stoners yeah. hang around. We didn't do any ourselves. A wink at you, yeah. My mate went there. He said there was a gym that was open for, for like once a week, twelve <laughs> till two or something like that. On a Wednesday. It was, it was one street. They had a museum which was just meant to send you. It was like all mirrors and meant to send you like pretend you're high. There was loads of guys with long, long beards just talking at you. We actually went there to St. Paddy's Day, so we got a of Guinnesses in at one bar and there was this guy playing music. That was fun. We had these cookies and they didn't do anything. 
and we went and it was like the oddest thing about it was this man with a beard who um, stared at a, like a statue all day and he was there the next day but most people do nimbing from Byron Bay on like a day trip yeah they run from there that's what we did because we got this camper van that was an option like I don't think you get many trips out there from like for a tourist trip thing like a minibus but yeah, going back to Baron Bay, that was a really nice place. It's, it's has a lot of parties, a lot of people to meet, but also wasn't too wild. It wasn't a city. Like Surface Paradise, that's more of a city, isn't it? It's got more high rises and. Mm. Yeah. We actually, um, it's not really relevant to people listening, but we met a couple of friends from uh, school who were literally <laughs> just driving down the road. Yeah. They, had a, they were in the camper van for a month. This, this couple now married <laughs> the girl was driving we were just walking off the road hear this beeping just cut across like two lanes of traffic and turn around and like to say hello to us and so yeah you, you're right you've mentioned it before people cross paths who are doing the same routes and stuff had you seen them before at that point? yeah in Thailand but right at the start of our okay. journey but we'd never planned to meet them yeah and they were just they must have just seen us and gone Sam and Kurt walking down the street. <laughs> it's caught up in traffic. <laughs> but it's, no, Surf Paradise is nice as well. They had barbecue things on the beach. You just cook your food there. Available to anyone. Yeah, camper van, you're just living out your own back door and pick up, go anywhere you want. Sit outside with some crappy chairs with other camper vans and drink a load of horrible goon. <laughs> <laughs> Goon's been talked about. It has been talked about. Oh, that's a shame. But I'll ask you a go question on. I've asked other people. It's <laughs> coming up my trademark question. Alright, go on. Four litre box of Goon. Yeah. How long do you think it would take for you to f- drink it all to yourself? Half an hour? No. <laughs> um, so that's a standard box of Goon, yeah? Standard box of Goon, yeah. I reckon we went through it. I did a tour on the Whit Sundays. I think I got through one, and that was. Maybe three nights. But if someone said, "Oh right, from nice, start to end, drink that as quick as you possibly can," <laughs> I don't think I'd want to. to be honest. <laughs> if not, you out, we'd kill you, really. <laughs> <laughs> if I survived, it'd probably take me all night, into going into the morning. So, six, ten, ten hours. <laughs> what we're saying? Yeah. <laughs> we'll no. spin the average. I don't um, want to big myself up too much. <laughs> One person, Paul, from the episode from Sydney to Stockport, he originally said 80 minutes or something like that. Oh. 80 minutes. Right. To break down the fact it's about six bottles of wine. Yeah. And uh, it's not wine, it's the poison. Yeah. I think you could sort of pace it out, say you're doing a bottle of wine every... I don't drink bottles of wine, so I don't know how often how long it takes to drink, but if you did a bottle of wine every two hours, is that but if you if you're going out and drinking, you can do a bottle of wine to yourself within an hour. But then if you did that, it's just like over and over. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be chaos. Like yeah, I wouldn't say. want to drink more than one bottle of wine. Yeah, so if you were to try and pace yourself, the problem is that if you said right, I'm going to drink one bottle every two hours and be really sensible, you'd get overconfident after like the second the bottle, and you think, oh, I can do this quickly, yeah. and then you start drinking it every what, 45 minutes, and then you get more and more pissed and then on top of that it's goon it's poison it's something <laughs> yeah. wrong with it and like you say you it's might end up dead bad, yeah. there's a guy actually who got in contact with me after the last show to say that he'd he tried it when he was in Australia in Melbourne and he didn't know if he finished it or not or not <laughs> <laughs> but he went to Cookie Bar in Melbourne afterwards and was doing a doggy paddle <laughs> on the dance floor <laughs> and then, Standard. And then I had to be carried home. Back to that was his first night in Mo Man's. Oh my god! Yeah, that's uh, my it... friend Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever drink Red Goon? No, I didn't. That is worse. Is it really? It's mad Red Goon. Yeah. <laughs> For instance, when when we got into Melbourne, the first this time, first time on Goon, and we hadn't been told, don't drink red or whatever. So we just got a bottle, a bottle, a box of Red Goon. <laughs> drinking that we got on really really well the whole time we were travelling and we were a bit surprised actually you know if you were in each other's pocket for ages yeah. you're going to get annoyed at each other after a few cups of 
Mercury. I fucking hate you. You're the worst travelling buddy. You never look at me. I want to go home to crew. It's better than this shit all. Um, no, I like. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> oh Not badly, but right. I mean, we had a bit of an argument because he sometimes guys like to smoke when he's been drinking, and I don't like smoking. But normally I'm like, oh, pattern, it's their choice. <laughs> but he'd had a, a drag of someone else's, and I was like, what are you doing? He's really smoking. <laughs> like, I'm nearly smacked out of his mouth. <laughs> and he was dead calm about it, luckily. But um, yeah, that's the first time we had an argument with Red Goon. I had took my laptop with me travelling, which I wouldn't recommend. Don't know why I did it. There's so many internet cafes, you don't need a laptop. Yeah. It's like from 2002 as well, it's like a heavyweight thing. <laughs> it's the heaviest thing in my bag. Three quarters of Could have got reach. stolen. Did alright with it, but then poured goon over half of my keyboard, so <laughs> I had to use like the on screen keyboard the rest of the time. But I think that was on Red Goon as well. And I was also woke up just like half of my body on the bed, fully clothed. Just must have just passed out. I must have just drank my last drop of goon and gone out and going to sleep. But um, red goon is not not advisable. I wouldn't say something else in that. Yeah, I don't <coughs> never, never tried actually. I think well, the proof's in how many people do you know who's had it? Like, yeah, it's exactly. all fruity Alexia, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the creme de la creme of <laughs> yeah. But I, I think when I first got there, I did the amateur mistake of not really knowing the different types of goon you could get. It's really goon 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 so <laughs> <laughs> It's because of the goon con- podcast. <laughs> and I think for the first time I just went there and, and looked and thought, oh, just go for the dry one, what's the difference? Yeah. And the dry one's it's real grim. That'll it's, give you a headache. It's life-threatening. <laughs> 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 you, you've got no choice other than to drink it. That's no exaggeration <laughs> whatsoever. You've got to have some lemonade in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was, a, that was nice. You had a bit of lemonade. That <laughs> was <it> nice. <laughs> yeah, no. Once you've been drinking, you're drinking outside and you're poisoning yourself, and someone brings some lemonade and says, Do you want to make sure? Yeah. Like, mm. <laughs> yes, yes, please. True. And then it tastes like golden syrup. But because everyone says it tastes bad, and you get the dry white wine. Of it's an acquired taste, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, certainly that. Because I, you, I heard all these reports, like even you told me went about goon and blah yeah. blah. So I was expecting to drink it. For yeah. you've got to drink it. It's one of those things that backpackers do. Even if you just do it once, yeah. it tastes like piss. But yeah, you know you piss. have to try it. So I thought, well, not got much money, so I'm going to try it. And just didn't know. That is the cheapest and, way. But ev- yeah, and everyone had told me that it tasted horrible. So I drank that the white one, the dry one. Yeah. And it was horrible, like yeah. excruciatingly horrible. And I thought, well, people told me it's horrible. Yeah, so yeah. I had it a few more times, and then someone said, "You know this fruity Lexi, don't you?" <laughs> oh, what's that? And it was so much less horrible yeah. than that. I think we yeah, had, I think we had the same similar experience. That dry stuff's a bit cheaper, I think, and maybe. Mm. But hopefully, if someone's listening to this, they can filter out that month of trying the the red and the dry <laughs> stuff, and just go straight. Oh well, yeah, Lexi. maybe maybe try it for yourself. <laughs> Hardcore sure. people out there going, <laughs> what are these pussies doing? <laughs> Some savage there who actually does one box of goon every night. Oh, God. So we went to Fraser Island. Yeah. Done all that, yeah. It's one of the other tourist things. I went to talk too much about it, but it's another thing like hill checking, actually, the way you're really away from internet and any entertainment in terms of uh, TV or anything like that. I, yeah, uh, really. I like that sort of experience. Yeah. When, I was going to touch on it earlier when you said about no internet. Yeah. It, I spoke about it before about surf camp having no internet, no phone signal, so you're left to your own devices and you make your own entertainment, and it's much better. It's much better, really. On, on that, when I went to Fraser Island, I completely messed it up, and there was a massive UFC event on the day I went. Oh, right, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went. I got this girl to text me the results yeah. as they came in. So the first one came in from the, from the prelims, and there was five main ones. Right. Oh, this is a work, and the lost phone signal. Right. So I spent the whole three days just thinking, well, mm-hmm. what was this? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got back to mainland, and all the texts came through. Well, yeah. and, and it really sort of drove me insane. So that was one. But didn't you find like that it didn't matter really in the end because you're having a good time anyway? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, um, it's still there in the back of your mind when you've not occupied yourself having a good time. In the end, your mind drifts to that. Yeah. I suppose so, yeah. But yeah, that was the one thing. Were you driving, were you doing the um, 
driving on the sand and what we, yeah what do they call it four wheel driving or whatever four wheel driving off roading <laughs> yeah it's de- decent didn't just say decent I was the first one in the group in our car, so it was very like Just kind of it. pressure. No, I did all right, but what it meant was the only bit I did really was driving on the sand, which just following the car in front before we got to the actual off-road bit. Mm. But it was, it was like, oh, it's really good, but I'm a bit under pressure because I'm the first guy doing it. But then when so when we actually got to the, the stop, it was someone else's turn, and I was like, oh, phew. But then it looked really, really fun to actually go up and down all these massive mm. hills and everything, like sand dunes. But yeah, it was amazing because Fraser Island's really nice and like it doesn't matter. It was really wet when we were there, but so there's like planes and planes of sand and it's that was really really good camping though. You just with a load of people again from all over the country. Got to entertain yourselves. You're teaching people things you've learned in your trip previously. So like some drinking games which we learned. We were teaching to these guys. Okay. And they were loving it. Like you know, you know they're gonna take it on to somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's great. And other people are telling new ones. There was a guitar. Obviously, I wanted to play a bit of guitar. And someone always <laughs> playing Wonderwall. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Taking your request. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> now people people like it actually. And I think that was the reason I brought it for his island. I can't remember. Goon. Goon. Oh yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we were drinking goon. The trip back, it was just the first realisation where this, this goon isn't normal alcohol, really, because my brain was... it just I must have just gone into going home mode, like my brain just clicked. And all of us were silent on the way back, and no one was talking for ages, and then guys just chirped up going, does anyone else feel a bit weird? Like stoned, almost. And we're like... Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and your mind was fuzzy, and I was probably think, tired, exhausted, and mm. obviously all the adrenaline had run out of you. Crap sleep. Yeah. Um, so that that was when we really felt the effects of goon, I think. And there's, there's a couple of photos, and just looked a bit, looked a bit out of it. But a lot of fun, a lot of fun those trips. So that's Fraser Island. So where's that off then? Is that off Rainbow Beach? Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite north. Yeah. I think then after that my next trip was with Sundays and this was the last trip I did which I was a bit apprehensive about because I get I, I've been on the boats before I've been seasick and it's a three nights on the boat our boat was called Spank Me which is quite uh, cultural and nice <laughs> if you don't mind a bit of uh, well it's not rude but I didn't poo for the whole time I was like right. if you know me yeah. I go to the toilet a lot <laughs> you went three days without doing a poo yeah oh my god I couldn't go right because there's a little latch on the door and it meant there was like an inch where you could see outside of the toilet so every time I went psychologically I was like someone might look in any, any minute and I like, so I went I tried to go and I gave up trying to go plus you popping in all this food which is like crap yeah. <clears throat> Made by the sea captain or whatever. Which Sunday's obviously yeah, really good. I think I overdid it a little bit and didn't didn't experience it. I'd say it's a it's kind of a picturesque thing you need to experience rather than a party thing. I don't think you can mix them both. Like that's what I did. Um the boat I went on. What's it called? Avatar. Oh, it's a bit nicer. <laughs> yeah, then spank me. Yeah. Just a little bit. The guy gave us a speech at the start about you know, do's and don'ts and rules of the boat and right, yeah, yeah. advice and he basically said look there's two nights so it's two nights and two days because the, the third day you just sort of go back to shore and that's it he said first night so have a few drinks get to know each other hang out but don't get too smashed because the next day we're doing snorkeling we're going to white over yeah. beach and we're doing something else and you don't want to get just completely yeah, destroyed get a bit feel, of sleep as well. feel rubbish and then just not enjoy it Yeah. whereas the second night well, on the third day, like I just said, they're not doing anything. If you want to go for it, go for it on the second night. And right. then, you know, if you're feeling bad, it's the next morning and you're not doing anything then, so it doesn't really matter as much. Yeah. And which everybody did, apart from this one pleb, who just went, drank on his own and went for it uh, on the first night. On his own? What's the point? <laughs> just creeped everyone out. Yeah. And then the next morning you could hear him, like, throwing up over the side of the boat. Bombing everywhere. Yeah. And then he just didn't enjoy the whole day. No. He did get told, like, don't do this for that reason. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Well, we, we weren't too stupid about it, like, but we had to stay up quite late. The bit I remember more about the Sundays was 
late night drinking on a boat with a load of people again. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Which I, I think I just think that because I really enjoy that. You meet people. Yeah. You, you sort of get to know them. The guard goes down a little bit after a few drinks and the games come out. And I, I really enjoy that. I did enjoy, we had a little football match on the Whitsunday's beach. <laughs> did you? Yeah, someone found the photo and like, <laughs> not many people have done this, but really. But after half an hour, I thought I was going to pass out because of the you know, dehydration and ah, okay. not proper sleep and all this. So I, and it's beautiful, really, looking back at pictures. I think, what, what I, was, I wasn't even taking any of this in, really. Yeah. Just playing a game of footy. It's Weird sound, it's mad. like silica, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's it's not it's not like any other beach, I've been on. And yeah, there's the, there's the coral reef as well, which I didn't do scuba diving, but I did a bit of snorkeling. It's kind of one of the intense trips, when, which I was glad it was over. So I could go to poo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. It's bowling ball for army. Must been a great poo when you, when you got the chance. It really was. <laughs> right. It was really good for thirty minutes. It's so much cute. Attacking that toilet bowl. Let yeah. us know tomorrow. <laughs> it was not very healthy. I don't think to do that. <laughs> yeah. That fell out of me. And that was kind of the end of my trip with Gaz because we that was at Early Beach. I think. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that sounds right, yeah. Early Beach, because there's a hostel called Beaches and another one next door to it. We, we stayed in both either side of the trip. A couple of days later, Gaz, he, he, he'd gone off to go up to Cairns, for your namesake, almost. Kind of, yeah. So I did experience a week and a bit on my own, but I can't, I don't know, people have done a lot longer, so I can't really comment much. Yeah. For me, it wasn't, like... I, I know I had limited time left, so I didn't make a lot of effort to make a lot of friends or anything. I went out with the people I was in hostels with. Yeah. Whilst I was still... I had, I had a week left in Early Beach and then three nights in Brisbane left to go. Literally, in Br- Brisbane, I was on going home mode. You had a week in Early Beach? I mean, yeah. Yeah. A whole week in Early Beach? Yeah, yeah, there was not much going on. <laughs> I was going to say, because... <sighs> Close to, it might have been like five or six days. I remember I spent a day either side in Early Beach. Right, yeah. And it's kind of enough. Like I said, there wasn't really much going on. I had to film my days a bit. Quite a lot of sunbathing going on and thinking. But you can't go in the sea because it's jellyfish. Yeah, I never went in the sea. There's a fake beach, isn't there? Lagoon. Lagoon, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I met a few guys, went out with them, and, and then, then they moved on and I met some other people. And... I like the going out, I like the bars there because they're like outdoor open yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit more chilled out, which I like that. There's an elephant bar, what's that called? I can't remember. Mom, mama. Baby Mamas or something it's called. That was a fun bar. That's what I mean, guys, I don't last night to go. But yeah, as soon as I got back, back into Brisbane, I was like, right, I've got two days, I'm going to buy some presents for family. I not. I didn't want to go out with anyone who I'd met in the hostel, I didn't really want to talk to anyone. <laughs> and then, yeah, I came home. All right. Him a Sounds good. <laughs> and the mum, everyone else. <laughs> I was say, but you picked me up. Favoritism going on. You picked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's your trip then. Yeah. Have you got any advice for people who are sort of thinking about doing it? I think everyone can, everyone's been, who's been travelling is going to give you some experience, uh, advice, whether you like it or not. You're going to hear a lot of different things. So I think the best advice you can give is going to be like something simple. And I'd say just to find your own feet there find your own enjoyment find out what you like doing I say I think I've mentioned it a few times on this podcast what I found is meeting new people hearing their story and getting you know I say you're probably going to be drinking with them and stuff um, seeing what they're like after a few drinks and stuff that's what I found I found I liked so it happened happened very very often so yeah it's just just finding what you like and then continue to do that and you're going to find people who, who have the same thing in common with you. Don't feel pressured to... Yeah, right, OK, this is my advice. <laughs> <laughs> this is my advice, right? All right. <laughs> I come back and I've, I've heard like, other stories of other people, and I go, oh, I wish I'd done that, or I wish I'd done that. But it wouldn't be your own trip if you'd done, done all these things. So I think just enjoy the time that you're there. Don't regret missing out on something, because fear of missing out is the worst thing you can have. On the on the on the travelling trip, and uh, yeah, just do do what you want to do. That sounds like top quality advice to me. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it to me, but okay. Uh, 
Show <laughs> someone out there. Oh, also, yeah. Also, just to finish it off, make sure you take take something from your trip back when you're back in England or wherever your home country is. Like what? Experience, just worldly experience, worldly okay. knowledge, other people's advice, things like that. All right, sounds good. Anything to promote, like Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, or do you not care? No, nah, don't worry about that. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Anyone got any jobs going? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so no, sure. cheers for doing this. Appreciate That's alright. <laughs>